you are. Those burbies. Who's this dude? You won't catch me alive. Geoff ran in the other direction, slamming the door behind him. The three remaining clients in the tavern watched him go without saying a single word. You must have thought you were a tax collector. How uncivil. So, back to the topic at hand. Right. Hey, Ana, come here. This, uh, this one here was just asking about you. Get this. He thought I was your husband. I said master. Same thing, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is one of those things I was taught wrong, ain't it? <laughs> gotcha. Yodagreb had taught Ada a lot about the role of women far from his backwater village, but there's still much to learn. This was, after all, the same Ada that had refused to work for Aina just a year ago on the basis that she would be his boss. A few whacks in the head set him on the right path. Back in the present, Aina was looking up and down at the strange deer in front of her. She sat next to Ada, feeling rather restless about his stranger that wouldn't keep staring at her. Our dear boy picked up on it immediately. Wait. Absolutely do not. You may call me Berbeth if you must spend your breath discussing anything other than this beauty. Oh, look at that skin. Porcelain could never be so pearly. Gods above! Is that alabaster? Ada and Aina shed a confused look while Berbeth kept rambling. Look at him go. Is he hitting on you? Um, however, hmm. The almost total absence of a snout and that triangular nose shape do not seem to align with the heavily embellished idea of the Echaine held by the rise of the Saxurat. A fawn, perhaps? No, of course not. Eyes so detailed, rounder shapes and a small mouth. Oh. Look at that blush covering the nasal area and the cheeks. The very expression of femininity. Oh, ho, ho. Undoubtedly unique. He, he's totally hitting on you. Yep. Of course, the Sophie may have had a twisted sense of humour, shaping their servants like us, but <laughs> they had their own moral standards. Uh, oh, <clears throat> my point is, I never expected to see a golem with female features. Could I somehow convince you to part with it? Don't call it an it. Oh my god. <sighs> oh, my oh, 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 right It even talks. How did you make it do that? She. Aina's a she. Yes, yes, I said as much. Wait, what are those spikes between her teeth? Some sort of defense mechanism? Burbis pulled Aina's jaw open with his left hand, trying to get a closer look at her fangs. What are you doing? That's completely invasive. Luckily for all of the involved, Ada pulled Burbis' hand away from Aina's mouth right as the jaw snapped closed. An automated shutdown function with a timer for protection in the inner workings of the artifact. Oh, oh how fascinating. Uh, I think she's kind of like a sentient being. She's not really like an automaton. Come on, dude. What's your problem? Don't go sticking your hands into people's mouths. That's uh, gross. Why, I would never. Uh, oh. You are talking about the golem, are you not? Aina is not a golem! Indeed, this is not a golem. This may very well be the golem. And I am very much willing to pay accordingly, I assure you. But to elevate it to the status of person. Oh, what? What's wrong with you? Aina's a doll! Are you certain about that? I do believe I look more like a doe than she does. If you would be so kind as to ignore me. Uh, yeah, I was trying to avoid the subject, but since you brought it up, uh, are you a buck or... You could have been a fair deal subtle about asking that question. Yes, I file my claws for better accuracy, and yes, I lost my horns. But I am a man. You are no less a deer for having lost an eye, are you, sir? I guess, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Burbeth. Oh, worry not, friend. Truly, it is not the individual to be blamed, but a society that places unnecessary emphasis on weaponry and traditions from an age of intellectual darkness. I, I don't know what's going on, but I don't trust this dude. I know, right? 
I get so much crap for having small horns. Like, what's wrong with them? I should be the only one worrying about my horns. Indeed! Isn't the practice of turning our annulus to bone as a rite of passage simply barbaric? Without it, we would be free of accidents such as the one that beset me, and your need to overcompensate for your side conflict. Ain't as bored as hell. Yeah! Wait, my what? <clears throat> Both Ada and Burbiz turned to look at Aina. They'd clearly forgotten all about her. Wow. Look at that face. Oh, I could almost swear it looks offended. Oh, this guy is <laughs> so disrespectful. She, not it. I'm not saying that Aina looks like a doe. She is a doe, Mr. Burbiz. And I'll buy no doe with a father, not a builder. Aina's gaze shifted the other way. Upon hearing the word doe, he used to refer to her. She nodded anyway, not to leave Ida alone. Well, it certainly isn't uncommon for an engineer to consider his, uh, his magnum opus a child. It is, however, extremely unnerving. Much like your complete ignorance towards the unique characteristics of your acquisition. The albino-like features we are accustomed to stem from the decay of their original paint. The root of her fur and beet red underpaint on this Aina's nose indicate that she was most likely done originally. I see the green dye is recent though. Copper dye, perhaps? A, uh, <laughs> bold choice. Certainly not one I would have made myself. This guy's gonna get a punch in a minute. With all due respect, sir, do you understand the kind of chemicals you're exposing your gold onto? Ada stood still. So very still. It would seem he had turned to stone. Then the stone began moving. He got up very slowly, putting both hands on the table until he was fully standing, like the towering mass he was. You can call her my boss. You can call her my friend. There's a zillion things you can call her because she's all that and more. But by that help you if you call her my golem again! At a scream, almost sent Burbis's glasses flying. Panting and clenching teeth was not an expression befitting a boy so sweet. Aina put a hand on Ada's arm. The boy stared at it for a moment before carefully shrinking back to his place on his seat. Ahem. If your eyesight is as bad as I suspect it is, perhaps you should consider acquiring a monocle friend or a relaxing cup of hemlock tea, both of which would do you much good. I am not sure as to how you stumbled upon her, but I am what you might consider an expert on the subject of Basakterat as a whole, and I can tell you, this is a golem. She's not! Is too! Is not! Fine. I have been told the rose seemed hard of hearing out of sheer stubbornness, but let no dear say I did not attempt to reason with you first. Prepare to be convinced, sir. Burbis's cape flew open. He drew a dagger with his left hand and pointed it at Ada. Seeing this, the barkeep rushed over to their side. Stop that, you halfwit! They're gonna destroy the tavern! Who? That fool! Before even an inch of the tiny blade had been revealed, Ada started running, and even though Burbiz clearly didn't have any intention to pursue him, Ada kept running all the same. No, not the Sandford! The beast! Oh, not this again! Please, this is a golem! Honestly, are all you villains nearsighted? Aina glared at Burbiz with all her strength, but she promised not to cause a ruckus. All she could do was stand up to watch our brave buck immediately head in a panic to the other end of the room. A knight that had run in the opposite direction, wherever he saw a pointy thing. Some knight that would be. Then again, Ada hadn't said anything about that for months. The only one to ever mention it anymore was Gaioff. Of course, Ada had stopped talking about becoming a knight. He knew how ridiculous that sounded. And he probably realised at some point what everyone knew, there was no hope for him. Once more, Aina had stayed behind. She had clung for dear life to the idea of a boy that had outgrown her, ridiculous as it sounded in that precise moment. Aina sighed to herself, finding the whole situation rather underwhelming. She didn't even react to Burbiz's approach. The so-called golem expert cut a small gap in Aina's trouser leg. Now, face the irrefutable proof. Look at this. What's he going to stab her? Wait, where are its joints? Uh, maybe the other leg. N no? Uh, over there? Uh, how about up? What is he doing? Oh, that is 
very anatomically correct. Rude. Punch. <laughs> yeah, you deserve that. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. Perhaps there was still hope for Ada. I really don't know what to say. Part of me wants to yell something like, I expected better from you, son. But I'm all about standing up for the little guy. You're all tiny to me, after all. But against all evidence pointing to the contrary, Ana is very much not the little guy in any situation. Ever. And even if she was, you really should be a little wiser about who you pick fights with. How's I supposed to know that asshole son of a beast was lord of whatever? Hey, we don't use that language here. I said we're calling perds, don't expect to leave back in my town. Making mothers the subject matter is not respecting ladies. <laughs> Patron insults moms all the time. And since when's that senile desert shrub a role model? <laughs> what in the name of the Hatsa are you laughing about now? Oh, I see the shock! Ada, let me go with her. Oh no, you're not going anywhere. I keep my guards well behaved, and I expect no less from the citizens, Adder. Mindless violence is not the solution to your problems. But you knew this already. Adder let his head rest against the bars that cover the small window in the door, making sure to give Illigrav the meanest of looks. Look, I'm sure this is all just some big misunderstanding. I know Bourbon! His train of thought is a bit weird at times, sure, but he's not a bad kid. There has to be an explanation for this. He pulled a knife and started cutting her clothes off, come on. He ain't got nothing to... Kid, I can barely understand a word you're saying. You're gonna stay here thinking of what you've done until Burbeth wakes up. If he wakes up. Come on, Ana. It's time for you to go home. <sighs> Ana gave Illigab a very meaningful look. <sighs> Wait for him in the entrance, but I swear by I am I that I'll rake you across the coals if I find a single prick out of place that her saw when I'm back. Are we clear? Aina nodded eagerly. Illigrab gave her a dubious look, but he seemed to be in too much of a hurry to make sure if she'd stay put. Alright. Options break into his cell or actually keep a promise for once. Uh actually keep a promise for once, why not? Aina cast a look on Ada's direction. The boy nodded. She better behave. Aina took a seat on a sturdy looking bench and fixed her gaze on the tip of the boots. She wanted to try her best not to cause a ruckus. So you're not just going to keep me waiting. You're going to keep me waiting in a cell. Oh, Jaceev's here. Who's this dude? He's new. But babe, you know that I wouldn't leave you if I didn't have to. It's an emergency. Elba. But the ruckus came her way all the same. Why can't you just let me go home and tell Miss Rochelle that you can't make it today? I'm sure that I can get you a refund. Again. Because I still want to do this, damn it! Just wait here, act like you've been caught, I'll finish in a minute. I'm sure you will. Hmm. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> you have yet to prove me wrong, Sir Askada. Just you wait. I'm going to bring the best wine in the whole of Akathor and we'll go back to your room and it's going to be a wonderful God's damn night, you hear me? I'm going to wipe that smirk off your pretty face. The door was slammed shut, though the gazelle remained impassable. Bring more wine for Jesse. <laughs> oh, Elbar, you're too easy. In a city with a million citizens spread over leagues of terrain in like 10 districts, only of which only about 5% were bottom, the odds of finding the same damn gazelle that made Ada sire were pretty low. And yet there she was, the gazelle with red hair, the gazelle that, yeah, she was really, she had got big, you know. Where are you looking, Snowflake? For being so good at being sneaky, Aina definitely was lacking on the art of subtly appreciating others' figures. Hey, you're the one that was with Gioff back in the alley, aren't you? Where's that jerk? Don't tell me he got caught too. What? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't speak beast. Okay. I don't speak fawn either. Aina folded her arms over her face, angrily looking away for a lack of a retort that didn't involve using her fists. 
if Gaius' theory was correct, that snippy girl was the gazelle for whom Adda sighed, hereby proving Aina's theory that Adda only surrounded himself with imbeciles. Excluding herself, of course. Jasif, as she called herself, tiptoed around Aina in search of a spot to rest her legs on the same bench. She stopped halfway, suddenly pulling closer to Aina. That's a curious pattern you have there. Where did you get it? Aina wasn't feeling particularly disposed to reply. Say, you wouldn't happen to be friends with... Hmm, what's his name? Something about a high field? Oh, Adder, perhaps? Aina's ears perked up. As she turned to look at her, the gazelle smirked, suddenly irradiating an aura of haughtiness. A green-haired albino... No, of course. <laughs> he told me quite a bit about you. His beloved boss, Iona. Aina followed Jasif's line of sight, finding the signed hammer she carried on her back. Her name didn't read correctly in modern Cernar, but it was more surprising to find a gazelle that could read at all. No, that doesn't sound right. Aina? Wait, to Sena? The gazelle stared at her for a moment, wide-eyed, her facade broken a moment, revealing an excited young girl underneath. The daughter of the merchant, yes! My brother had a huge crush on you. He begged and begged mom to bring you home, and she even offered your father a hefty sum to buy you. But that was when she thought you were a golem, of course. Do you remember her? Far wife of the guy? Or me? Any of that at all? Have you forgotten me too? Aina hesitated for a moment. She finally shook her head, and for a moment she could have sworn that Jasif looked downright hurt. A heavy sigh signalled that the moment of honesty was over. Jasif let her face rest on one hand as she looked down on Aina once more. Fancy that. I was just a child the last time I saw you, but I didn't forget you after all. Either I have a very good memory, or oblivion isn't as eternal as they say, huh? <gasps> Don't make that face, Pipsqueak. Only an idiot would think that you're a golem for long. You don't need two eyes to see that there's a breath of a soul inside you. See, Jasif gets it. It was now the gazelle's turn to stare at Aina until the smith felt uncomfortable. I see anger when I look at you. A selfish anger. Pride that only grows by the day. I see a need to have it all. A need to leave a mark in the people around you. Framed by the vague hope that they won't remember your mistakes anyway. But I can't see you at all. Are you a mirror, perhaps? Or am I looking too much into this like a certain someone I know? <laughs> Aina didn't understand what this Jasif was laughing about, but she immediately assumed that the gazelle was mocking her somehow. So how does Oblivion work? How far back can you remember? Can you remember your life at all? Will I forget that you exist again if I don't see you tomorrow? <clears throat> Come on, humor me a little. It's my first time talking directly to a ghost. Wow, Jazif knows a lot of behind the scenes stuff. As far as she could tell, anyway. Aina's lack of response filled the room with a deep, uncomfortable silence. Actually, Mom told me that people get cursed for doing something so unforgivable that the gods can't look the other way. But what would a kid like you do? Leave food on the plate? Forget to brush your teeth before bed? Okay, options. Insult her. Insult the gods. Insult her butt. <laughs> Let's go for the butt option. My plate may be full, but thine is surely empty. Brother with a brother ass. Aina actually spoke. Wow. Excuse me? <laughs> Got her. What? Oh, hi, girls. <laughs> Wait, he's here? How did he even... Ugh, never mind. Where's that idiot Elbar when I need him? Jasif paced back and forth, muttering things under her breath as she looked at the door, but the smith didn't hear any of that. Her mind had stopped functioning altogether. Aina hadn't even opened her mouth. How did she even do that? You, cabbage head. Make sure Adder doesn't do anything rash. Her imperative voice echoed in Aina's mind, clouding every other thought. She suddenly felt obliged to comply. Okay. This, this dude's completely worked up. Itagrab nearly slammed Adder's cell door open. He finally stopped saying Adder, upon seeing said boy Kami sitting on the bench. I. I. <clears throat> hey there, lad. I have some good news and some bad news. 
Which do you want to hear first? Uh, what's with the handprint on Edda's chest there? The bad? The good news okay. is that Burbeth is alive and well. He'll wake up soon. Bad news is, uh, you and I are going to be taking a stroll to the marketplace. What? How is that bad? Uh, are you familiar with the words, <clears throat> attempted magnicide? Oh, wow. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain on the way. Off we go! We're going to get punished or something. Add us in for the Wait, trouble. What do you mean by public execution? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> hey, end for now. Thanks for playing. All right, we reached the end of chapter two. So, yeah, Ada's gonna get uh, executed, I guess. And yet, yeah, as it says at the bottom, sole developer, artist, and writer. The game is essentially made by one person, so it's a bit of an achievement for a one-person game. And it's quite fun. It's got some interesting characters. It's got a lot of lore going on. And it's it seems to be quite well thought out. There's a lot of secrets going on. So that's, yeah, that's cool. And we're going to, hopefully, Chapter 3 will come out at some point. And, um, yeah, providing everything goes smoothly, we'll check out that as well. But for now, this is Ushio signing off. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.